Joining me now is Michael Bosacu, a global affairs analyst and a former spokesperson for the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Thank you so much for being with us. Good to be with you, Rosemary. So last week, uh, President Biden was threatening Russia with severe, unprecedented economic sanctions if it invades Ukraine. Now, 8,500 U.S. troops are on alert to be deployed in Eastern Europe. What suddenly changed? And would Vladimir Putin likely, or how would he likely, view this, do you think? Well, clearly, uh, President Biden has been, I think, really scared by the reaction of what he said. So he felt that he had to perhaps put his pivot to Asia Pacific on hold and focus more on what's going on in Europe. A lot of division in Europe right now. Macron just saying he's going to have uh, talks with uh, Putin and Zelensky and kind of go it alone. But I think um, uh, Putin uh, may uh, view this uh, buildup of troops with interest, but I don't think he will be very deterred by it. You know, if the U.S. really wanted to make a big difference right now, what is really needed is air support for the Ukrainians. That's where they're at the weakest. And I'm talking about AWACS planes that can really deal with their blind spot in terms of providing them with clear intelligence. It's something that they have been begging for for a long, long time. The other thing I, I should uh, say, and Nick Robertson alluded to this, is that there's very interesting and very um, concerning developments going on in the occupied territories in the Donbass with the Russian-backed rebels or thugs or whatever you want to call them, claiming on Russian state television this morning that they're preparing to be attacked. So what they're doing is they're prepositioning more weaponry, uh, multi-rocket multi launch systems, snipers, that sort of thing. And uh, I think that's kind of where the action is going to be. Putin may decide that he needs to defend them, defend people he's given Russian passports to, and move into that area. You mention the lack of unity in all of the divisions in Europe. Of course, uh, they're bending over backwards to prove the opposite. President Biden meeting with European allies via video link Monday, all agreeing that they were united and that any further aggression by Russia against Ukraine will have severe costs. So uh, will this show of unity or this apparent show of unity, you, you don't think there is any of that, along with economic sanctions, weapons support to Ukraine, troops on alert, on standby in Eastern Europe. Will that be sufficient to deter Russia's president from invading? You mentioned the air support. That's not going to happen at this juncture, certainly. Uh, no, it isn't going to happen. I think um, any illusion we had of European unity was uh, crumbled during the pandemic. I wrote a whole book about diplomacy in the pandemic. And, you know, if the Europeans couldn't get their act together during a life-threatening incident like the pandemic, I don't think they're going to get their act together on this. And look, you have uh, real economic interests at play now. France, for example, wanting its dairy products back on Russian store shelves. The Germans wanting um, Russian gas through that Nord Stream pipeline. So a lot of uh, conflicting different interests here at work. And as for the Ukrainians, I feel they, in many ways, uh, have felt they've been thrown under the bus. And I think they're aligning more closely, for example, with Poland, the Baltic states. So you could see that bloc acting uh, more unilaterally as time goes on. Yeah, Ukraine not happy with the U.S. and the U.K. pulling out non-essential embassy mm -hmm. personnel. I, I want to just refer to the U New York Times op-ed uh, written by former top Russian expert with the National Security Council, Fiona Hill. She wrote this, Right now, all signs indicate that Mr. Putin will lock the U.S. into an endless tactical game, take more chunks out of Ukraine, and exploit all the frictions and fractures in NATO and the European Union. She also said this needs to go to the UN. Is that uh, what needs to happen? And uh, what would be the consequences if that were the case? Well, I agree with, with everything Fiona Hill has said, except that it needs to go to the UN. UN. Of course, it should go to the UN Security Council, but we know what's going to happen there. China and Russia will, will veto uh, stuff there. So, uh, no, I think uh, what, what really needs to happen is for the you know, international community to really get its act together. And look, um, Ukraine is under hybrid attack right now as we speak. Uh, over the past few days, uh, false bomb threats have been called into Ukrainian schools, to subway stations, and uh, also there was a big cyber attack uh, last week. The one uh, area where it would be very, very painful for Putin and his inner circle is if countries like the United Kingdom suddenly banned Russian oligarchs from buying and owning property, sports teams, 
freezing their bank accounts, I think then the oligarchs would go back to Putin and say, this is intolerable, something has to be done, back off. But uh, I, can't, I, I can't say the West is in a very strong position right now, and Ukrainians have good reason to be fearful and concerned. Yeah, we're watching all the twists and turns of this as tensions rise. Michael Bosakiu, thank you so much for your perspective. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Well, South